Hi, it's Mr. Anderson. Welcome to Biology Essentials, video number 22. This is on the effect of homeostatic disruptions. In other words, how changes in the environment can have huge implications when it comes to uh, cells, molecules, populations, and even ecosystems. And so I wanted to start by uh, showing you a picture of uh, an invasive species. And this invasive species is something we don't usually think of as invasive. It's the earthworm. What does that mean? Earthworms in general, were not found in North America. And the reason why is that during the last ice age, as glaciers retreated from North America, it scoured the earth. And as it did that, it pulled the soil off. And so it got rid of all of the earthworms that we have in North America. Now, there were some in California and some in the southeast, but there were generally no earthworms. Um, and so they're really uh, invasive. They don't belong here. But as the pilgrims came and, and more, more uh, as uh, more recent time, as we started bringing soil and animals and things over, the earthworm established itself. And we're actually helping that problem. Every time we go fishing and we let some of the earthworms go, we're actually ravaging some of the forests. And so an example could be in Minnesota. Minnesota is not designed to have earthworms. And so the problem with having earthworms is that they will devour the material on the surface of the uh, leaves, detritus, things that are dying. And normally the trees and the plants in the forests of northern Minnesota are not evolved to have worms. And so it's actually making the understory in a lot of forests very unhealthy. Um, and so it's a change to the environment. In this case, it's a human change, but changes can affect uh, homeostasis. And so um, essentially homeostasis is that stable internal environment. Disruptions then are going to be changes in the environment itself. Now those can affect things at the level of just cells, individual cells, or even individual molecules. Example I'll talk about is just dehydration in humans. And then uh, they can also have implications when it comes to larger levels like the ecosystem. And I'll give you an example of an invasive species that really shows you the power of changes to the environment. And so let's start with dehydration. Uh, dehydration, we don't tend to think about it because we always have a steady supply of water um, in general, but dehydration can lead to huge implications very, very quickly. There are actually three types of uh, dehydration. Hypertonic de dehydration is where you're just going to lose water. What does that do to your blood? It's going to cause your blood to, to uh, shrivel up. Uh, hypotonic is going to be when we lose solutes. That's rare, but it's going to cause our red blood cells to lyse. Most of the dehydration that we get is when we lose both water and solutes. Um, and it doesn't take long for us to die as a result of that. Why is it doing that? Well, uh, we live on land, and as a result, we have to bring our osmolarity with us, and we have to maintain that. And water is super crucial to life. And if we don't have water, our circulatory system quickly is going to break down, and we're eventually going to die. And so this is a uh, child that is um, dealing with dehydration after the big earthquake in Haiti. Um, and some ar armed service person is helping to give them a little bit of water at a time and, and hopefully bring them back to life. Um, but it doesn't take long to die from dehydration. And so normally, Normally in a human, about 75% of our water actually, or our body is made up of water. So water is, a, is, is a polar, it allows it to dissolve material, and so it's a, it really is the elixir of life. And so most of our body is made up of that. But if we don't get enough water in our diet, so let's say it our drops from 75% to 73%, so we have water loss, these are some of the consequences of that. We're going to have thirst, discomfort, loss of appetite, dry skin, constipation, and that's just in a drop of 2%. Now, what is that water loss affecting? It's affecting our blood. It's affecting the tissues in our body. And so uh, it's, it's, uh, our body tries to accommodate for that, but if you don't have an influx of water, um, it, it's going to be serious really, really quickly. And so if that water loss goes to 5%, then you're going to experience headaches, increased heart rate uh, as example or as a consequence of changes to the circulatory system. Your body's going to crank up its respiration rate to try to accommodate, accommodate for that. Nausea, tingling in the limbs, just with a loss of 5%. At 10%, you'll get muscle spasms, skin will shrivel up. Your vision is going to dim, and that's because we're going to get an increase um, in the blood concentration or the blood pressure. Stop, 
uh, urinating, then you eventually undergo delirium, and then at 50% you're going to die as a result of that. And so this is a change in the environment. In other words, we're not getting enough water in. As a result of that, um, the cells are not going to function correctly, and as a result of the cells not functioning correctly, you will die quickly as a result of that. And so that's an example of an environmental disruption. Now these organisms here all look pretty cool. Uh, common mina, the cane toad, the carp, short-tailed weasel. Um, all of these look pretty neat, but they are notorious. They're on the list of a hundred of the worst invasive species on our planet. Now some of those are going to be fungi, some are going to be plants, uh, but these are some animals that are wreaking havoc on our planet. And that's because they're adding to a new ecosystem. In other words, they're being introduced in an area where they normally aren't. And as a result of that, they normally don't have predators and things can get out of control really, really quickly. And so this is a disruption at the level of an ecosystem. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, probably worst stories of an invasive species would be on the island of uh, Guam. Guam, after World War II, um, was a big part of World War II, uh, but it's now a, 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 a protected democracy. I think that's how it fits with us um, to place it in the U.S. This is Indonesia. Guam's going to be right up here. Um, and so it's going to be in the, uh, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It's a beautiful island. Um, had beautiful birds on it. Um, and it's an uh, island paradise. Um, but unfortunately, after World War II, somebody stowed away on a uh, boat. And this is the brown tree snake. Brown tree snake, uh, they, it wasn't found on Guam before then. And once it established itself, it just went out of control. There are no natural predators for that um, tree snake. And so it quickly could climb up in the trees, eat the eggs of the birds, eat the birds. And so their populations have plummeted. I think something like 12 bird species have gone extinct just as a result of the introduction of this tree snake. Um, the tree snake, as a result, has bred out of control. I think I read at one point there were about 100 brown tree snakes per every hectare uh, on Guam, and so it's a huge number. Um, they're having a hard time getting rid of them. They're causing power outages. They'll climb up onto the transformers and short them out, and so it's a nasty uh, change to an island. It's an invasive species, and so what it's as we lose those bird species, it's going to be a change in the insect species, and so it's thrown the whole homeostasis of an island um, kind of out of whack. And so um, they're trying to trap them. They're trying to use, I think, acetaminophen to poison them. Um, but what they're not trying to do is they, they kind of toyed with the idea of introducing a natural predator of the brown, sea, or the brown snake, but they're worried that that could lead to other problems. Uh, and so uh, islands are super susceptible to uh, invasive species. Um, but again, it's just a change in the environment which is throwing off the homeostasis of uh, either a cell or a population or even in this case, an ecosystem. And so I hope that's helpful.